Do you like to save money on a cruise? Of course you do. Who doesn't like to save money? Well, in this video, we're going to share with you four different ways that we have learned that you can save money when booking that cruise cabin, and it's all coming up. Okay, how to save money when booking that cruise cabin. That's what this episode is about. And the things I'm gonna share with you, they are things that literally, you can save up to hundreds of dollars on every single cruise just by taking these few simple steps or considering these options. Now, if you're with us for the first time, we are Jason and Kelly and we are your travel scouts. We give you tips and tours to help you and prepare you to have the absolute best cruise experience possible and we help you to save money while you're doing it. All right, let's talk about those four considerations that are gonna help you save money when you're booking that cruise cabin. And some of these are gonna help you get that upgrade that you would like to have but maybe think you can't afford and you can find that you get it at a great deal. Now one thing I want to say is many of these that we're going to share, they're going to become more and more prevalent as more and more cruising resumes. Right now here, just post-COVID, a lot of cruise ships are not selling yet at full capacity. They're keeping the, the packing of the ships down a little bit. But when they begin to go at full capacity again, seeking to book every single room, that's where a lot of these potentials for great deals come into play. So let's start with number one. The first consideration that can save you a lot of money in booking a cabin is to consider booking a room with an obstructed view. This one can literally save you hundreds of dollars. Some of you may be asking, what is an obstructed view room? That sure doesn't sound good. What it means is basically if you have an ocean view room or a balcony room, that there is something that is blocking to some degree, maybe just a small degree, but it is blocking to some degree a full view that you would normally have. And those cruise lines, they classify them as an obstructive view room simply because they do not want their cruisers to be disappointed, to show up to their room and say, hey, I got a balcony room or an ocean view and I can't really see fully out of this and I'm upset and I want money back. They don't want to deal with that. They want you to be happy on your cruise. So they go ahead and classify the various rooms with any obstruction as an obstructed view room. And a lot of times you can get these at a great deal. Now let me give you some examples of staying in an obstructed view room. And Kelly and I, we have done this. One thing would be, for example, if uh, maybe you're a midship on the same level where there is the lifeboats and maybe something is blocked by a lifeboat to some degree, or maybe there's a whirlpool that is somehow, or a piece of equipment that is somehow blocking a portion of the view. Other ships Kelly and I have stayed on, we have stayed in rooms where there is a passageway between us and the edge of the ship, so you can't really get a really full view out into the ocean, and so that is classified as an obstruction view. So what are the benefits of getting an obstructed view room? Well, one is the saving of money, but you can really do that in two ways. One is if you're planning to book an ocean view or a balcony cabin, you can get those at a reduced price. A little bit of a reduced view, but you get it at a reduced price. But the other way is it is a great way to save money by getting an upgrade. For example, Kelly and I, we sell interior cabin and ocean views a lot. That is primarily what we sell because we sell to get the bargain and enjoy the cruise and we don't spend a lot of time in our cabin anyway. But it is really nice for us to be able to go from the interior to that ocean view and the obstructed view, sometimes that cabin of an ocean view can be at a similar price to what you get with a, an interior room. But it still allows you to be able to see what does the outside look like? Is it sunny out today? Is it morning time to be woke up by the, the sunrise coming up? And sometimes, once again, that obstruction is just very small and it's not that different than all the other ocean views. Same idea with the upgrade could be considered when going from an ocean view to a balcony room. The bottom line is you save a lot of money. The next question you may have is how do you find an obstructed view cabin? Well, there's a couple ways. One would be you could get the deck plans for the ship there online. And look, you'll have to look very carefully, but they have the little legends there. And most of the time, most cruise lines will have those marked in some way. So you can see which ones they are. And a lot of times you'll find those at that better rate. 
Another way is just to tell your travel advisor, if you use one, that, uh, that you're open to that, that that's something you're willing to consider if it gets you a better price and have them look into that for you. And just a reminder, the travel advisors, if you use one, it doesn't cost you more money to use one. They get their feedback from the cruise line, but they're able to do a lot of that legwork for you to get you the best value. So let them know if that's something that you're open to. Okay, so we have talked about booking an obstructed view cabin. That is a great tip. Let's move on to the second way that you can save a lot of money when booking a cabin on a cruise. And the second way is to consider booking a guaranteed cabin. A guaranteed cabin. You can save a lot of money by booking this way. First question you may have is what is a guaranteed cabin? It basically means that you want to book at a certain level or category of room but you don't care where it's located at. Now, most of the time when people book, they book the exact cabin that they want. They pick the level that it's on, the type of cabin that it is, interior, ocean view, balcony. They pick all of that all the way down to the exact room number because maybe they don't want to be close to the elevators or they want to be on the back of the ship. They select that. When you book a guaranteed cabin, you're basically saying, I want to be at least at a certain category. I want an ocean view, no interior, I want at least an ocean view, but you can stick me wherever you want. Whatever level, you can send me to the front, to the back, midship, I don't care. And you let the cruise line select that for you. And what they do, a lot of times they give you a better rate because you have that flexibility. Now, booking a guaranteed cabin is one of the best ways to regularly get a discount when you're booking your cruise cabin. But right now, immediately post-COVID, where the ships aren't maxing out their capacities, you're not gonna see quite as much of a value with booking a guaranteed cabin because they have some flexibility with the number of passengers they have on a cruise ship. But when they get to where they're trying to book every single room, they're gonna be willing to give you some of that value for having the flexibility because a lot of people really know what they want, but if you're open, there's value there. Now there are upsides and downsides to booking a guaranteed cabin depending on your point of view. So I wanna share both of those with you. Let's talk about the upsides first. There's several upsides. One is you save money. We've mentioned that, and that's really sort of the whole genre of this video. So you save money, and we love saving money. The second thing, though, is you a lot of times will get a really good upgrade, right? You want a guaranteed ocean view cabin, but maybe the ocean views begin to fill up, but there's some balconies left. A lot of times you can end up in a balcony room when you're still at that ocean view guaranteed price. So a free upgrade, we'll take that, right? And that's a key thing to remember. With a guaranteed room, they can move you up levels, categories of cabins, but they can't move you down. You're guaranteed at that level. Another benefit from mine and Kelly's perspective with the guaranteed cabin is that we have never stayed in one that we have been disappointed with. We've never been on a cruise that we were disappointed with. Now, maybe we're just easy to please, and some people are. You're just going to be satisfied. You're not that picky about things. Well, if you're like that, this is a great option for you and a way to save money. But that brings us then to the possible downsides with the guaranteed cabin as well. The downsides are gonna come very much into play if you are a person who has a certain type of room that you love or hate. If you hate, for example, being close to the elevators, then that's gonna be terrible for you, right? Or if you wanna be close to the elevators because you wanna be able to travel quickly throughout the ship, then you may not end up close because you don't know where your location is going to be at. Another way it could be a bad option for you to select a guaranteed cabin, would be if there are certain things that would make your cruise experience absolutely horrible. For example, if you're like, don't want to be anywhere near maybe a kid's zone on a ship, then you don't want a guaranteed cabin because you may just end up there. If the thought of being below the main theater is a really rough ideal for you, don't get a guaranteed cabin because you can't guarantee that's not where you'll end up. Another downside of booking a guaranteed cabin would be if you're selling with a group. Right? If you're with a group and you do the guaranteed cabin thing, you may end up on far separate sides of the ship. Now that can be cool if you got balcony rooms on the far side, maybe you got sunrise hitting one and sunset hitting the other, you can just go over and room to room, that can be a good thing. But if you wanna be able to be close and not separated like that, then it's something you need to consider and the guaranteed cabin option may be a downside. So booking a guaranteed cabin is one of the 
absolute best ways to save money when booking a cabin on your cruise once cruising has fully resumed operations as long as key statement you're flexible with where your room is located. So then the next question may be, how do you go about finding these guaranteed cabins? Well, once again, there's two ways. One is if you use a travel advisor, just let them know that that's something that you're open to, if there's value available with that. And then the other is if you're checking out by yourself and booking by yourself online, I wanna make a key little disclaimer here. Not every cruise line has these guaranteed cabin options. Not everyone offers them at a discount, but some do. So when you're going through that process of selecting your room on your own, what you'll see is something to the effect of two boxes when you're going through there. One is, I will pick my own cabin, my own room, and the other is, I will let you decide. It doesn't matter to you. And you'll select one of those two, and there's pricing differences sometimes that are different between what you select there. So that's how you would go about selecting a guaranteed cabin. So booking a guaranteed cabin is a great way to save money, but let's get into the third way that you can save money when booking a cabin on a cruise, and that is number three, research cabin upgrade options. Research cabin upgrade options. And the best way for me to go about explaining this one is just to give some examples. Let's say, for example, you are a family of five and you're looking to book together on a cruise. Well, on most cruise ships, there's a relatively small number of cruise rooms that can be configured to hold five people in them. So guess what happens to those rooms? The price then goes up, up, up. It really comes down to simple economics. It is supply and demand. That price can go up and what a lot of people can will do at those times, they'll say, well, hey, I guess it's too expensive to cruise right now they'll back away and they won't consider other options. But what that really means is that type of room has become rare and the prices went up. And the reality may be, you may be able to find two rooms that are adjoining, that getting two... Do you ever have a hard time talking? I am having one of those days. Take number 5,076. What I'm trying to say is that sometimes you can look and find two rooms that are joining and get it for about the same price as you do getting that one room that holds five people. That wasn't that hard, but I made it real hard. Another example would be if you're planning to get an ocean view room and you're about to book that, well, hey, go ahead and pause and take a look at a balcony room. Again, if the balconies aren't booking up very quick and the ocean views are about all booked up, you may actually find a great deal on a balcony room. So go ahead and check it out. Same can be said for going from a balcony to a suite or any of the upgrades. It's just always a good idea to pause and check and see what that next level room is booking for. You may be surprised great way to save money. And that brings us to the fourth way to save money when booking a cabin on a cruise, and that is to develop cruise line loyalty. Develop cruise line loyalty. Almost every single cruise line has a loyalty system, usually based upon the number of nights selling on their cruise line. And as you move up in level, what you'll find is you get sent more and more deal options for booking with their cruise line. Now, Kelly and I, like probably some of you, we like selling with a multitude of cruise lines. However, we have found that we sell primarily with Carnival Cruise Line. And we continue to sort of go back to them, one, because we're familiar with them, but also because we're developing that loyalty and therefore we get those options to sell really, really cheap. So as you're selling on different cruise lines, if you find one that you just sort of really like and really sort of fits you, then yeah, sure, try them all out. But the more you can go back to that same one, the more you're gonna find options to save money down the road. If you are open to these four considerations that we have discussed, and if you take these into account when you're booking your next cruise, you will no doubt find some way to save some money when booking that cabin on your cruise. And if you've watched through to this point in the video, I'm hoping you've got some value out of it. So if you don't mind, please go ahead and hit that like button. Also subscribe and hit the bell. We've got tons more information coming out with tips, tours, and money-saving techniques. So we'll be seeing you in the next video, and thank you for watching today.